So Oklahoma is one of my favorite spots, muzzleloader season especially. Uh, this year I had the pleasure of taking my youngest son Kyle, my customer service manager. Kyle been working hard all year and he needed a break and he loves these muzzleloaders. McWhorter Custom Rifles presents Welcome back, folks. This week, we're headed to one of my favorite spots of all time, Northeast Oklahoma. I'm hunting with my good friends, Dane and Cole Drake, Legends of the Cimarron Outfitters. If you remember last year, we killed a really good buck, but we passed up an even better buck. He was a young buck that needed some more time. His name was Trump. This year, he blew up into a mega giant. We renamed him Brandon. We're gonna kill him. Let's go, Brandon. Precision Hunting TV is brought to you by McWhorter Custom Rifles, McMillan Fiberglass Stocks, Swarovski Optic, Hornady Ammunition, and Borden Accuracy. So tomorrow, gonna drive to one of my favorite places to hunt in the whole country, and that's uh, Northwest Oklahoma. Go hunt with our good friends Dane and Cole Drake of Legends of the Cimarron Outfitters. Killed a pig out there last year, passed up a really good one. Gonna go back and try to kill him this year. We've been looking at pictures and he's a, he's a giant. So I gotta make sure this muzzleloader's dead on. Uh, might have some pretty long shooting, probably not over 400 yards max. Hopefully get a 200 yard shot, but uh, we're always prepared for the worst case scenario. So. Gonna shoot the 45 XC male and uh, Pittman bullet. Gotta make sure it hits exactly where we want it to and then we'll be ready to go. I've got 400, put our ignition cartridge in. Yep, that was perfect. Perfect. Dead in the center. Can't wait to get to northwest Oklahoma. Uh, Kyle's gonna be coming. I've already shot Kyle's gun. Already got it loaded up. He's gonna have to fly out there because he doesn't have much time to be there. So uh, both of us are ready to hunt northwest Oklahoma. So Oklahoma's one of my favorite spots, muzzleloader season especially. Uh, this year I had the pleasure of taking my youngest son Kyle, my customer service manager. Kyle been working hard all year and he needed a break and he loves these muzzleloaders. So this year's gonna be a big contrast in weather from last year. Last year, same time of year, two days into the season, I killed a buck called Bill Clinton. 22 degrees, 20 mile an hour wind, three inches of snow on the ground. This year, me and Kyle get to Oklahoma, it's 93 degrees the afternoon that we get there. 93, last year it was 22. So we know this is gonna be a tough hunt, but Dane's got some, got some couple of bucks patterns, couple of them on the river that are in heavy timber, real close to where we're feeding them. So we still think we got a good chance. Well, it's the first afternoon uh, here in Oklahoma. We're going to go to the same spot we went this morning. It's definitely a lot hotter this afternoon. We got about a 20 mile an hour wind, um, but we got you know a good good picture of deer yesterday that hopefully will show back up this afternoon. So we'll give it a shot. See what happens. It's 
It's about 4.30 here in Oklahoma, first afternoon. Hunting with Dane Drake of Legend of the Cimarron Outfitters here in Oklahoma. And uh, got a pretty stout 20 mile hour wind, but it is in our faces. So um, pretty warm days, about 85 degrees, but feeling a little optimistic. So we'll see what happens. Our setup, we got a blind set up here on top of a sand hill. Looking at the bottom of this uh, river bottom here, see, you know, thousands of yards both ways. We got a couple of good bucks working this bottom area here and just hoping they uh, come out to eat tonight, so. So Kyle and them, they're in the blind. They start to see deer late in the afternoon, a few does, a few bucks. It gets down to about the last 45 minutes and they don't have a whole lot of hope for, for seeing a, one of these big shooters that Dane's got on camera because there was three bucks on this on this area right here. All three were shooters. But uh, 45 minutes before dark, here comes a buck, and it's the biggest one of the group. This segment is brought to you by Borden Accuracy, makers of the most accurate custom hunting actions on the market. Manufactured in the USA to true bench rest tolerances. Borden Accuracy equals success. Darren, there he is. 45 minutes before dark, here comes a buck, and it's the biggest one of the group. What do you got? Lost him. I heard it hit. Down. Down. Got him. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I like a pretty good ping, buddy. First day. First day. <laughs> That was a good shot. He's done. <laughs> yeah. You weren't lying about that brow time. Well, couldn't ask for a better first day in Oklahoma. Darren's behind the camera. Seems like my good luck charm. Every time he comes around and shoots a deer on the first day, couldn't be happier. This deer's got huge brows. He's old bruiser. Lane's been helping us today. We're hunting out here with Dane Drake. Um, Legends of the Cimarron Outfitters in Oklahoma and great outfit out here and huge deer and uh, couldn't be happier. 45XML put them down, ran about 50 yards, um, about 275 yards, came out on the opposite side. We thought he was going to come out, but it all worked out. So this year I'm hunting one of the biggest typical deer that, I, that I've ever known. It was a deer that we knew last year, we called him Trump. He was just a great younger deer, just needed some more time. Last year, Trump was a, a great, young, promising 170 inch deer. I mean, usually you don't let those kind of deer go, but we knew what he might turn into and he did. He turned into a true 190 plus inch, mainly typical deer. We knew we were gonna kill him, so we changed his name to Brandon. Last year we had the benefit of some good winds and some good weather. This year, not so much, and we knew it was gonna be a tough hunt. So the first few days of the hunt, we're gonna hunt this deer mainly in the afternoons because to hunt him in the mornings would jeopardize you know, our evening hunts. Uh, we see a lot of deer, a lot of young deer, a lot of up-and-comers. The only mature deer that we saw on our feet, on his feet, during the uh, daylight hours was a big eight. 
that we knew from the previous year. And though he was a, a, a very good 150 inch eight pointer, we were gonna be hunting for Brandon or nothing. Okay, so it's day five. We got six days to get this done and the weather's not getting a whole lot better. Matter of fact, today it's gonna be 40 mile an hour gust. Well, there's our first year of the day, a big doe. Down there eating a the wheat field. It's uh, about 60 degrees right now. We got about a, shoot, 30 to sometimes 50 mile an hour gust of wind. So uh, glad to see her. We've got about uh, an hour and 15, 20 minutes of shooting light left. So I know the weather's getting better towards the end of the week, but I wish it would happen today anyway. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by Extreme Wildlife Adventures, Hoff Power Auto and Outdoor Stores, Surge Pro by Biofact Crop Care, Ultimate Antler Deer Feed, Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, and Mesquite Creek Taxidermy. Uh, it's really gotten windy, I mean super windy. Uh, gusts up to 40 miles an hour. We see a big nine pointer and our big older mature eight show up. So we're starting to get a little more excited these mature bucks are up on their feet, so we're hoping Brandon shows. In very last light, our buck shows up at the very edge of the field. I get the 45 XML in place, make sure Darren's running. We make sure that's him because it's gotten, we're only got eight or nine minutes of a shooting light left at this point. All right, welcome back to another downrange shooting tip with Alan and myself. We're going to discuss the cant and also the importance of a bubble level. There's a couple of factors that feed into that. You know, whenever you initially level out your scope and make sure it's on there, it needs to be truly, you know, dissecting the bore, vertical through the bore, because if you have cant in your mounting system, it's going to cause issues. But right now, I'm just going to really focus on the bubble level itself and how important it is. I'm going to go ahead and get it down behind the scope. I'm going to go ahead and line up with the, the 200 yard zero and I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the five degrees of cant into it and I'm going to dial the 27 and a quarter minutes that it takes for this rifle to reach a thousand yards and you'll see that it's going to move down to the right and as I come up to come back on target and I'm still in that five degrees cant, I've moved left. So with the wind that we have, and uh, depending on that, I might switch it to the right, depending on what wind we have, and we'll try and mitigate the wind so you see what the true amount of the uh, cant, how much it's going to induce a uh, missed shot. Usually on most rifles, you know, especially on the 65 Creed more, five degrees of cant is going to be about 30 inches. So we'll see how that goes. Alan's going to give me some wind to change, so you might see that I might switch back and forth trying to mitigate the, the wind so we can actually calculate the true cant effect. All right, so let's go ahead and get behind the rifle. Starting off, I'm gonna go ahead and put the five degrees of cant. Is it a left wind or a right wind right now? Left Alan? wind, about three miles an hour. Left wind, so I'm gonna go ahead and cant to the right, five degrees, which is right about there. I'm still on my 200 yard zero. I'm gonna put it on the target. Just pay it just a little bit. All right. Now I'm going to dial up the 27 minutes. Well, it's changing again. All right, it's all right, I'll switch. I just want to demonstrate. Now you see how I've moved down into the right, and now I'm coming up and left into the target. We have a left-hand wind, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the cant to the five degrees left. And what would be the wind hold, Alan? Give me a minute left. A minute left. All right, you ready? Send it. All right.
right. You can see that impact off to the right, about 25 inches or so. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and level up the gun. And we're gonna see if we can't get that corrected with our wind hold and see what the right looks like. Left two and a half miles an hour. Okay. On the dot. Good shot. All right. So Good now call. you can see. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so now you can see the importance of the level. At extended distance, especially 500 yards and beyond, it's really going to be critical whether or not you have an ethical shot, you know, ethical hit, or a critical miss, which could potentially wound an animal or completely miss outright. So that concludes another downrange shooting tip from McCorder Custom Rifles and Precision Hunting TV with Alan and Keith. Precision Hunting TV is also brought to you by McWhorter True Precision Long Range Hunting and Shooting School, Tacticam, Leo Photo USA, Sig Sauer, Trigger Tech, Brux Barrels, and Hawkins Precision. This segment is brought to you by Rudy's Country Store and Barbecue, Real Texas Barbecue. At very last light, our buck shows up at the very edge of the field. I get the 45 XML in place, make sure Darren's running. We make sure that's him because it's gotten, we're only got eight or nine minutes of a shooting light left at this point. What do you do? What? He's down? Okay. <laughs> Woo Cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> what else can I say that I don't usually say? I like big bucks and I cannot lie. Those other huh, can't be nigh. When a buck comes in with a big old rack, try to put him on his back. <laughs> ah, give me five. This is what we do this for. This is why we make these extraordinary muzzle loaders. This is why we have all the accessories in the shooting systems to go along with it. And we make them for hunters. And last time I checked, I'm a hunter. And I just love this. When you shoot something with something you make and make a good shot. This was a tough shot. I'm not patting myself on the back, but this was 280 yards with a muzzle loader in a really, really, really stiff wind in low light conditions two minutes before legal. So anyhow, we killed this buck that we let go last year. There was about a 170 inch younger deer. He needed another year. We were starting to second guess ourselves because we've been hunting hard for five days in terrible weather conditions, terrible wind conditions. It's gonna get even worse tomorrow. And we got him. He's, he's down at 283 steps from here. We're fixing to go put our hands on an Oklahoma giant. I can't see nothing. I see something. I see something. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious alive. Goodness gracious. Oh, 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 oh my goodness gracious. Look at that, look at that. Look at the bases on this thing. God, he got seven inch bases. Dane Drake, Legends of the Cimarron Outfitters. Been hunting with him for several years now. Him and his brother Cole, just great people. And uh, they always try to put you on a good buck. And last year, they had this buck. Dane said, I, I think he's young, but if you want to shoot him, you can shoot him. So we came out here last year and we saw him, we saw him a couple times. And uh, 
my cameraman last year was just amazed we didn't shoot him. But he said, uh, you're not going to shoot him? And I said, yeah, next year. And uh, five hard days, terrible weather conditions, terrible wind conditions. And that's what we got, just a mega, a mega, mega, mega Oklahoma buck, just like a dream. I mean, just amazing, absolutely amazing. <laughs> Ooh, good Lord, he is big. Dane and I both thought that this was gonna be a mid-180s deer. When I finally got to put my hands on him, I realized he was much bigger than we thought. This was truly the biggest mainframe typical that I've ever, ever hunted. He ended up scoring 196 and 6 eighths, and we determined he was five years old. He was a legend. Everybody in the whole area knew about him, but I was fortunate enough to be there when he walked out. 45 XML did his job. All the training, year in, year out, did his job. We had a great buck on the ground, and I'm just blessed to be able to hunt this caliber of deer.